Okay, we're, we're good to go. Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Trahan. I'm, I'm the chairman of the Economic Development and the Redevelopment Agency in Wethersfield. Um, I need to do just a little bit of housekeeping with regards to the governor's executive order 7B. Um, today's meeting will be recorded or transcribed uh, and will be available on the town's website within seven working days. Um, all speakers that, are pre that present or have something to share with us today need to clearly state their name and title, uh, if applicable, um, every time that they speak. Um, so with that being said, again, uh, welcome to today's uh, second uh, meeting on the reopening Weathersfield Phase 3. Um, the businesses, as we know, that will be affected uh, by today's uh, or uh, coming in a couple of days will be uh, restaurants, personal services, hair salons, barber shops, libraries, outdoor event venues, um, indoor performing arts, uh, and bars and nightclubs, as people know, are, will still be closed. Um, I'd like to start with some introductions, if I could. Um, today's um, um, uh, attendees will be uh, our mayor, Mike Rell, uh, Gary Evans, our town manager, Pete Gillespie, um, who will be uh, predominantly be the brains behind today's presentation, who's done a very thoughtful PowerPoint for us to follow. Uh, Mike Moriki, Fire Inspector Steve Larulo, our building official, uh, Barbara Gigliotti uh, from Central Connecticut Health District will be sharing stuff with us, and also Deb Raven, our partner uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, with that being said, Pete, I'll turn over the reins to you and uh, pipe in uh, as little as possible. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, just, a, just a quick recap of where we are with Connecticut's reopening plan. Uh, as you uh, are all aware, uh, we're now into phase three of the reopening plan. Our phase three goes into effect this Thursday, October 8th. Um, just to put things in, in context for uh, where we are and where we've been with the previous uh, two phases uh, that the governor's executive order covered. Specifically, phase three, um, the next few slides are just to highlight the rule changes that uh, the governor has put into play. Um, primarily, uh, the changes that he has here are to increase capacity of uh, businesses uh, in Connecticut. Um, however, uh, the increased capacity must keep in mind that uh, we want to continue strict adherence to um, social distancing, the wearing of masks, cleaning, disinfecting, uh, appropriate signage, employee training, and all of the other safety requirements. It's even more important as we expand capacity that all of those things are kept in mind. The governor has made uh, two distinctions uh, in these new rule changes, uh, comparing indoor facilities to outdoor uh, facilities. So as you see in the next few slides, there are distinctions between uh, venues and where they're hosted indoor versus outdoor. Uh, one of the big uh, news items from the phase three uh, is Theaters and concert venues can now uh, be open, uh, which is which is new. Um, in terms of specifics, uh, the rules are now for private indoor gatherings that are located in a commercial venue. Uh, those can be held at 50% capacity, but they are also capped at 100 uh, people. Additionally, uh, if you are hosting a, a private <coughs> event in a home setting, uh, those are, that's still going to be capped at 25 people. Um, restaurants specifically, uh, as you probably are aware, phase three, phase three allows the capacity of restaurants to now be bumped up from 50% to 75%. Uh, increases the indoor capacity for libraries, hair salons, and personal <coughs> service establishments also up to 75%. Um, in terms of uh, performing arts venues that are hosting indoor events, uh, that capacity has been increased to 50%. The capacity for indoor graduations and religious church services um, are 50% capacity capped at a maximum of 200 persons. The capacity for outdoor uh, event venues uh, is 50% and there is no cap on those outdoor event venues. Private outdoor gatherings in commercial venues are capped at 150 people. As Mark said, bars and nightclubs uh, are still closed, 
And there are some provisions that uh, walk up bars are allowed at private events, as long as you maintain social distance. Uh, if you leave your chair to go to the bar, you must wear a mask. Uh, so that in a, in a nutshell are the uh, most significant changes uh, that the governor uh, has put into place effective this coming Thursday. One other uh, note that we want to make, uh, as you also probably aware, Governor's Executive Order Number 9, which went into effect on September 16th of this year, authorizes the issuance of fines for violating uh, the wearing of face masks in the settings that we just mentioned. Uh, also to be, uh, to be advised that if you are hosting, organizing, or sponsoring a gathering that violates um, the uh, prescription, prescriptive orders of the governor, uh, and if you're having excess capacity, there are fines for that. And then you can also be fined if you would attend an event like that. So just wanted to remind folks that there are provisions in effect for the enforcement of these uh, executive orders. At this point, uh, from the Central Connecticut Health District, uh, Supervising Sanitarian uh, would like to uh, give the perspective for the Central Connecticut Health, Health District. And Barbara, I see you're on the call. So if you can jump in here, that would be great. Okay, yes, I'm Barbara Gelati from the Health District. I am the Supervising Sanitarian here. And from our perspective, um, the most questions we've gotten so far uh, are for restaurants with indoor capacity wanting to know, uh, for instance, using booths. The rule had been you have to use every other booth unless you have plexiglass between the booths. So the most common question is how high does the plexiglass have to be? So the answer is from the back of the booth up to six feet from the floor. So whatever height your back of your booth, let's say it's a four foot booth, you need another two inches of plexiglass, uh, two feet of plexiglass above that. And that way you can use every booth, which will help with increasing to your 75% capacity. And the other most common question we've gotten from uh, salons is, what does this mean for them? And basically what it means is that provided you can have your clients still six feet apart within the salon, that you can actually be working on two people at the same time. For instance, if you put color in somebody's hair, you can cut somebody else's hair while the person with the color is waiting for it to develop. So that way you can have two clients in at the same time, as long as you can keep them six feet apart. But the waiting rooms are still closed, so no, no waiting rooms allowed. Um, so those are the, the biggest questions that we've had so far. And I'd be happy to answer questions from anybody that has them. Hi, I do have some questions. Um, I'm Katie Sullivan from the Web Barn. Uh, and I have um, an indoor and outdoor event space. And I have a few questions if I can ask them. Sure. Uh, OK, so masks required indoors are they required outdoors yes they are okay so basically at all times except for eating and drinking correct correct okay um i had been told at one point that windows and doors all must remain open uh, we have a 12 by 12 opening which is going to let in a lot of cold air um is it possible to just open half of that or we have a smaller door cut into that uh, yes, you can open just a smaller door. The, the real point is that they don't want a lot of people handling doorknobs and, okay. and touching surfaces. Um, I've had guests ask me if they have, I mean, right now we can do 70 indoors. That's 50% of our capacity. I've had guests ask me, can I put, if, if they have 85 people, can I put half out, half in? Do they need to put everyone out if it's over the 70% or 70 people? No, you can have part in, part out. Okay, all right. And uh, what are the rules on a dance floor? Uh, we're discouraging dancing. That's just too close. Uh, so we'd say no dancing. I've been getting really conflicting answers on that. Some people 
people are saying as long as they're distanced or if they're with their own partner, but you just say no at all. I say no. Okay. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. There will be an opportunity for um, questions at the very end. So why don't we move on at this point to our uh, next participants. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I think on the, on the call, we have Mike McCricky from the uh, Fire Marshal's Office and also Steve Laterulo uh, from the building, uh, building Department. So I'll let you guys toss a coin and uh, decide who wants to uh, cover uh, the talking points from uh, the code point of view. I'll let Steve start, age oh. before beauty. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mike. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Litterall. I'm from the building department. Um, yeah, our, our main concern is um, is outdoor dining. I think at this point we are concerned if you do something interior with like plexiglass and things like that, just be aware of egress um, where you're not impeding egress or anything like that. As far as outdoor dining goes, um, as everybody know, the weather's getting cold. So um, we do um, require permits for a dish. If you know if somebody wants to heat a tent, um, because there are some requirements for propane tanks, um, specific type of heaters and things like that. If there's any electricity that's provided outdoors, um, that will require a permit also because of inspections of, you know, the electricity being outside and, and special requirements for, for that. Um, if, if it is something and you still maintain out, outdoor dining, um, just be aware of egress and access to facilities. Um, if anybody needs a facility, be aware that they're not impeded with, uh, you know, steps or anything like that, where they do have the access to get to where they need to go. Um, other than that, I'll leave it up to Mike. I don't know if you have anything to add, Mike. Uh, just on egress, if there's any questions as to how something would be set up, we're more than well, um, happy to come out and help you however you need to do. Um, tents are really the big thing. We Everyone's coming in the cold season, so heat's gonna be a thing. Propane needs, and, and the heater unit need to be at least 10 feet away. No electricity attached right to the structure of the tent. And there's a, we have an informational sheet that I could send out as well. So that's roughly it. Um, and like I said, any questions, comments, concerns, do you feel free to contact us. Mike, this is Mark Trahan. Thank you for that. The sheet that you're referring to that outlines the uh, guidelines for uh, uh, propane tanks, et cetera, is that something that's available easily on the town's website right now? Is Pete, is that something um, that we It's got? actually, it's for the tent regulation. Um, it can be. I can get it to IT and have them put it up onto the fire marshal's page if that's helpful for you guys. I think wherever Pete, um, um, the business community is, is gonna go to first or second, we should make that available. Um, also, what's the time frame, guys? Um, uh, this is to the building department, um, Steve or, or Mike or Anthony. What's the time frame if I'm a business owner and I have a tent and I wanna make an adjustment to the tent or I wanna put a heater on you guys getting out uh, to that facility? What's your, I know you guys are, 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 are pretty busy. What's the time frame? If I called today, on that you could get out and visit that business. Well, like I said, the first thing it'd be it'd, there'd be a permit required. So, so the first thing, yeah, yeah. Come in, um, give us a permit, give us an outline of where everything's going to go, where the propane's going to be set, where the heater's going to be set. We're, we'll need some information on the heater to make sure that there's no flames or anything like that involved, to make sure that it's okay for the tent. Um, as far as inspections, once once the, once the permit's in, we're available within 24 hours. Right. come up and take a look at it. Um, it should be a, a fairly quick thing. If somebody needs us quicker, I mean, we can work with them on that. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions of our uh, code officials? If not, we can move on. Okay. Uh, Deb Raymond, I believe, is on the call from the Chamber of Commerce to uh, uh, provide their assistance in this uh, phase three. Hi, good morning. I'm Deb Raymond, the Executive Director for the Wethersfield Chamber of Commerce. Um, needless to say, it's been an interesting year working with all our businesses in town. 
Um, what I have found very uh, enlightening though, is that the members have really uh, band together to really promote some professional loyalty to each other uh, during these trying times. And I think that we've established that by um, brainstorming together on how to get the word out to the business community that we're open, um, uh, do the many regulations that have changed, we've been able to support each other on making sure everybody's well informed. Um, I, I think that um, it's made the Chamber of Commerce look at all our businesses in town. And like I said, we have really kind of joined together and worked together to, to keep everybody moving. Um, we are always looking for new members uh, and the members that are established we're, we're, we welcome you to come and be an ambassador with us and uh, get your word out. So any help that you need, whether you're a member or not, please reach out to me. And if I don't know the answer, I have lots of resources to help you. And uh, I wish everybody good luck with the rest of the year. Thank you, Deb. Uh, we've also put together uh, this list here. If you're looking for more detailed information about your particular business, how the phase three rules apply, um, and uh, also provided contact information uh, for the Central Connecticut Health District, uh, all listed here. So there's information from the state of Connecticut, um, specifically uh, information for the individual business sectors. Uh, we've got a link to the town web website. We have a uh, collection of information related to the uh, COVID-19 situation and the governor's executive order on the town website. There's a red band uh, on the homepage of the town website. If you click on that, it'll take you right to all of the information that we've talked about. And then lastly, uh, this is the link to the Central Connecticut Health District. If you have specific uh, information and questions, you can reach out to those folks directly through that website. And that uh, brings us to uh, the end of our uh, presentation. So at this point, Mark, I think uh, we, we'd be happy to open it up to questions, uh, comments, uh, or, or anything regarding uh, phase three for all of the speakers at this point in time. Pete, I do have one, uh, one question. Um, PPE seems to be not as significant of an issue as it was when we did this a couple of months ago, but if any of the business owners are interested in PPE uh, contacts, if they do need it once business increases and they wanna provide masks to potential guests that don't have them, et cetera, um, what's, what's the best place or resource? I think Anthony actually provided us with a, um, a resource the last time. I just thought we might wanna have that on record. Maybe that's a question for Mike McCricky. At, at, uh, early on in the, in the crisis, uh, the the uh, Connecticut Business and Industry Association was distributing uh, PPEs through the uh, emergency management coordinators. That was um, uh, Anthony Dignati, uh, our fire marshal. Mike, I don't know if you have any, uh, uh, shed some additional light as to whether that program is still available or not. I'm not sure, but I can look into it and give you an answer if okay. that works. Um, I know we do have some stuff left. I'm not sure where it is with reserve or anything. I can uh, check with Karen today. Yeah, and a lot of our connect, sorry, this is town manager Gary Evans. A lot of the connectivity was through the state of Connecticut small business um, or in uh, DECD. The web link is still active on the town website under the coronavirus section, which would um, give a suppliers list, as well as where you can get additional personal protective equipment. I don't know the level that they're at, in terms of being able to still give that out. We can continue to make that available online. Thanks, Gary. Any other questions uh, out there from, from anyone? So I just thought of another question. Um, can couples in their wedding parties, et cetera, take off their mask for photos? Yes. 
Thank you. Good answer, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. Got a, we've got a quiet, quiet group out there. I will well, ask a question then. Oh, oh go ahead, Judy. Go ahead, go ahead Judy. Uh, what, you know, if face masks are required in restaurants or in, at the barn or whatever, <clears throat> what happens if somebody is non-compliant? It, what's the enforcement other than asking them after that, what happens? All right, this is Barbara from the Health District again. Uh, th that's a tough one. Uh, we get probably 20 to 30 no mask complaints a month now. And we do go out, but if it is a patron, chances are they're going to be gone before we get there. So, I mean, the bottom line is the business has a right to refuse service to anybody that doesn't have a mask on. So they can ask the person to leave. Um, we've seen some people get a bit belligerent about that. Um, that's a tough one. So if we do catch them, we can find them. We haven't actually done it yet, but we do have the authority to do so. It's a hundred dollar fine. But then I don't know how we're going to follow up on that. You can issue them a, a ticket, but I don't know where we go from there, which is why we kind of haven't done it yet. So it's a tricky one. But if you have like a consistent problem with a particular person coming into a business, you can give us a call and we can try and make contact with them and see what we can do. Any, any other questions uh, out there? Uh, um, Peter, I just, or... I just wanted to put in um, a plug for early childhood that we have a concern. You know, we don't think about daycares as small businesses, but enrollment is really down. And we just have a concern in Connecticut about um, centers closing because childcare right now is fine as long as parents are home. But if we lose the child care centers that we have, when parents go back to work, it's going to be a problem. So I just wanted to put that on everyone's radar that a lot of kids aren't going to preschool and preschools are suffering right now. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know that that's something that we're concerned about in Weathersfield. So just a plug for our child care providers. I'm worried about them. Uh, Kim, can you share with us how, uh, how, how far down the enrollments are or what, you, what you're experiencing? Well, the town program closed because we had um, one child enrolled, so they're actually going virtual. Um, but Soundbridge had reached out and just said that their enrollment is low. It's something as low as maybe 25% capacity in some of our centers. So I know the learning exchange um, logged on today. Um, but yeah, some of our centers are, are at a, anywhere between 25 to 50% capacity. And there are businesses that already operate on a really small margin. So again, that's fine as long as parents are working from home, but um, it might be just be a conversation we want to have with our providers offline. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Great, well, um, we're very pleased with the turnout um, uh, in the questions. Um, for those of you that are on the call that know people that may have not been able to make the call, obviously this has been recorded and if there's some information on here that you think might be helpful to any of your, anybody else in the business community, please forward it. Obviously, Deb, this could be a resource that you could forward uh, to your membership at the chamber. Um, Peter, thank you for the work on this. Thank you to the town officials uh, that have been here to answer questions. Um, with that being said, unless anybody else Peter, if you have anything else to share, uh, I would conclude today's meeting. No, thank you, Mark. If, um, if there are additional uh, orders, uh, changes uh, from the governor's office, uh, we will probably continue uh, to host events like this just to make sure 
uh, the word gets out uh, to those businesses that would be affected by this. But uh, we appreciate everyone joining us this morning and um, we will uh, keep you in the loop. All of this information will be posted, as we said earlier, on the town's uh, COVID-19 uh, pages, uh, which are pretty obvious when you turn on the town uh, website. So we will continue to do that as well to share the information. And please also uh, feel free to share uh, with your associates as well. Great. Peter and uh, everyone, again, thank you for, uh, for joining us and uh, stay tuned. If we need to provide more information, certainly we'll schedule another meeting, but thank you for attending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark day. and Peter. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.